Muslim terrorists trying to hurt Canada? Why aren't they trying to hurt Mexico? Because they see the, the, the dictators that are dictating and ruling the Muslims are being supported by Western policies. And, that, and the United States will have policies that are good for it. Meaning, there may be good reasons in the eyes of some why they are supporting them. But then, when you bomb a nation and then support dictators over them, and so on and so forth, then there are gonna, there's going to be a fringe group that's going to react to that. Just like, put yourself in their situation, which is what we should do as human beings. If, if another nation came into the United States and tried to take over us and dictate to us, it, it, it not dictate to us, but put over us their own leadership, from amongst us, but their own leadership, and that di dictator was really cruel to its people and didn't care about the voice of the people, would we react to that? Would we react only against the government, or would we also react against the? As Americans, we'd also react against the foreign power that's trying to invade us and con and and support this dictatorship. I think most reasonable Americans would stand up and not accept that. I think most reasonable Americans are going to say this is not acceptable. I think most reasonable Americans who have read the Declaration of Independence and stand by it are going to say yes. When any country brings in tyranny, we're going to push it away. That's why the United States of America pushed England away, because they didn't want their dictatorship on themselves. And so the same is true with the Muslims. And unfortunately, you know, and regretfully, they have killed innocent people in their, their, their short-sightedness. But can you blame a whole religion for that? Can you blame 1.5 billion people for that? No, of course not. To do that would be like to say, you know, well, look at the KK Klan, and therefore everyone that's a Christian is a racist. Everyone that's, a, you know, all the Christians are skinheads, are, are, are Christian skinheads who feel the white people are superior to the black people, and so on and so forth. That's obviously not fair. So this is what I'm trying to say, that Islam, Islam teaches us to be peaceful. Islam also teaches us to look for justice. But Islam also teaches us that if you are in a situation that doesn't give you justice, then you should seek justice within the parameters of being peaceful, right? And so we seek justice within the parameters of being peaceful because this is what our situation dictates. And so, and this is what, uh, so, so just let me go over everything, okay? We share borders. If you look at the number of people that have been killed, right? When in the media, when somebody, when one gang kills another gang, do we say, oh, that mob, that's a Christian mob that killed another gang? No, those people, most of the people are not even practicing. Now, some people might ask me about Taliban and ISIS, yes. So they do have a religious garb over them. But in my opinion, there's a lot more to it than what meets the eye. And, but I only in this video want to talk about that Islam itself, the religion itself, is not a religion that promotes violence. And it should be obvious to anyone, unfortunately, because of the way the media portrays everything, the way Fox News portrays everything, it tries to make it about the religion, right? And so you have your Donald Trumps out there, uh, and Donald Trump wannabes out there, who think that they know the world around them, but they don't. They don't really know the world around them. I bet you, if you ask any Muslim, name me, you know, there are more than 50 countries. If I were to say to anybody, give me the names of 11 Muslim countries. Give me a name of 11 Muslim countries. I bet you majority of the people that have this bias against Muslims, forget about naming, you know, more than 55 Muslim countries. You're not going to be able to be named even 11 Muslim countries. You can't because you don't know anything about the Muslim world. And the fact is that Islam is growing in America. And the fact is that Islam is part of America. And those people and those men and women that accept it in Islam in America are peaceful. They're peaceful people. Your neighbors, your doctors, your engineers, your cab drivers, in every part, in every area of, the, of, of American industry, of American economy, they're Muslims. They're Muslims who own businesses. You know, we're at least 7 million Muslims in America. And, and you know, even uh, a higher percentage in other European countries like, uh, like in France and, and, and Germany, okay? So I just wanted to make the point 
that yes, we do share a border. We have to love thy neighbor. You know, what ha wars, there are wars in which people have been killed far more than any Muslim country's ever killed anyone. You know, the image of the terrorist, it's not true. You know, I'm not a terrorist, but you would think I look like a terrorist. And that alone should prove to you, I'm here talking to you, telling you that what the Quran teaches. And I've taught Quran all my life. Muslim countries involved in violence, yes, there are a few that have an upsurge and a, a rebellion. And that rebellion isn't organized, it's a bunch of youth, you know, sometimes short-sighted, and they do a lot of stupid things. Uh, war and psychological issues, a lot of these Muslim countries, like Iraq and Afghanistan, that have been in war for more than two decades, they're going to have people with issues, you know. And uh, we don't take somebody from one religion and, and blame the entire religion. That's just not right. It's, you know, and, and we're talking about, the, with all the terrorist activities, we're talking about less than, you know, less than 1%. You know, we're talking about less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of the people, okay? And so, and then, of course, you have to understand that from their perspective and from their short-sightedness, who they're blaming, right? Rather than saying, look, this is our country, our people, our fault, we need to fix ourselves, we like to blame the other. And on that point, I want to mention something very important. We like to do the same thing. We always like to blame the other. We like to say, oh, the problem's in the slums. The problems are in the ghettos. The problem is over there. The problem's over there, overseas, it's not in America. Right? We always want the problem to be somewhere other than ourselves. And this is a problem Muslims have and the whole world has. And this is how we treat our problems. It's the problem of the other, not the problem of ourselves. And so, uh, so the, and, and then of course, you know, we have to look at why are they particularly targeting five, six countries like Israel, uh, England, France, the United States. Why are they not upset with Canada? You know, why are they upset with these particular countries? What have they been involved with? What have they done? What are their policies? And we need to look at justice and peace from the perspective of how can we all be in a win-win situation, not from a situation of how can I dominate the others, right? And then, of course, the media. And because the media takes a twist and tries to bring Islam into every bad action a Muslim has done, right? Uh, just like, and I'll give you an example, that, you know, uh, whenever, uh, whenever anything happens, like in the African-American community, right, if, if, if somebody has been shot by a cop, a lot of white people say, oh, well, you know, they're just bringing up the race card, they just don't know what they're talking about, everything's about the race card, race card. Just automatic re racial profiling, automatic racial profiling against the black people without understanding what their actual concerns are. Right? So when you're talking about a neighborhood, right? when you're talking about African Americans, it's racial profiling. When you're talking about Muslims, it's religious profiling. It's the same mistake in both sides. You come to black people with this mindset that, oh, well, they're, you know, they have the problem. They have a problem. And you come to the Muslims with it, the same mindset, well, you know, with the assumption that there is definitely a problem there. And, and this, need, if you are a true Christian, or if you are a good human being, a decent human being, you're going to look at the facts and realize, wait, what we're being fed by the media isn't true. And that's exactly what it is. You know, I challenge anyone to bring me on any of the major stations to talk about this. You know, and, and like I said, majority of these anchors on TV, they can't name 10 Muslim countries. They can't name... 10 Muslim countries and, and women's rights issues in those countries. They can't name 10 Muslim countries and talk, tell me about religious tolerance in those countries. They can't name Muslim countries and tell me about something good about those 10 Muslim countries, about their economy improving over time. You've got to also remember, right, majority of these Muslim countries were under colonialism, and majority of the Muslim countries are 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old. They're not... 300 years old, 200 years old, 400 years old, like the United States. You know, we as the United States have had a much longer lifespan 
than most countries out there. Most of the countries just got freed in, in the 1960s, and the 1950s, and the 1940s, and sometimes even after that. These are very young countries. They're still developing. But a lot of them have done a great job. Malaysia has done a great The largest Muslim population is in a country called Malaysia, the most peaceful country in the world. You go to Malaysia, even cops don't carry guns there. I mean, that's how peaceful it is, that you'll never see people fighting in Malaysia, literally, right? So, uh, so again, coming back, uh, is Islam a violent religion? Islam doesn't teach us to be violent. But those people who choose not to follow the teachings of Islam react violently to their situation instead of doing what Jesus and Muhammad and Moses taught us, which is to be patient in turbulent times. Don't be short-sighted in turbulent times. Be straight in turbulent times. And be patient in turbulent times. And so anyway, this is uh, what, you know, and, and the other thing that I would like to say as an American Muslim is that we got, we got bigger problems. You know, we got, we got violence, domestic violence. We got women being raped every two minutes. We got, we got issues, I mean, real issues, rather than like some imaginary, like, you know, terrorism that's out there type of thing and just focusing on that. We got really real issues in, in, in house issues in America in regards to violence at many, many different levels. The psychological issues of our military, what happens, uh, you know, in terms of domestic violence, what is happening in terms of youth violence, the violence and bullying in high schools, in colleges, in, 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 in middle grade, uh, just violence. And in fact, I would say, because, you know, the idea of the old, 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 the old West and the frontier, right, violence, we Americans, as a country, you know, we're the most violent country when it comes to developed countries, right? We have more killings than any other developed country in the world. When we compare the number of murders done in America to, you know, whether you compare it to Canada or England or France or Germany or any other developed country, we have, we kill more people of our own, in our own neighborhoods than any other country because we Americans... Uh, we, you know, the idea of, uh, 